Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What Ifs, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. This is part two of What If Deku Was Like Akaza. And as always, if you enjoy, show some love, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. I'm sorry that this episode probably is coming out a little bit later than it normally would have. Um, I'm not going to lie. I still want to stick to the Monday through Friday. Some things came up, so I had to like you know postpone a little bit and figure out when I, ha I can actually record this. I'm recording it now, and it's like 2 p.m. on the day that it's going to come out. So sorry about that. So it'll probably come out maybe 3, 4 p.m., uh, my time at least, P uh, PST. But nonetheless, I won't waste that much more of your time because I'm sure you guys are here just to listen to the what if. So that's exactly what we're going to get into. Let's get it. Azuku Midoriya has now sh basically shown what he's capable of. Has shown what everyone else basically lacks. Azuku's strength, his speed, and his overarching power is levels above everyone else's. And he continues to show that time in and time out. And during this quirk assessment, or during the quirk assessment that happened, he showed exactly why he was the number one student at UA High School. And with coming, or with the idea of being the number one student, well, there comes with a lot of jealousy. A lot of students are pretty jealous, but one more specifically, Katsuki Bakugo, is extremely jealous. Because Izuku, well, he's always been better than him. At least that's what it seems like and that's what it feels like. And Izuku is going to show everyone why he truly is better than Bakugo, especially when it comes to this first training session that they're going to have with the number one hero, All Might. Azuku and many others are prepared as All Might would storm into the room and All Might would give his signature, I am here. All Might would of course tell them that they're going to be doing some heroes versus villains training and to prepare themselves because this right here is going to be their first chance to show what they can do against other people. So now they're going to take on each other. All Might tells them all to get on their hero outfits or hero suits and get ready for a battle oh well, that would be different than any of them would ever expect because they're going to be doing a mix of battling but also strategy. It seems as if they're going to have to deal with actually seizing a bomb or defending it and that's exactly what's going to have to happen. Now, this is the explanation in itself. All Might would stand there speaking with everybody, telling them that there's going to be a hero team and a villain team. The villain team will defend the bomb. The hero team will try to seize the bomb. Now, villains are allowed to capture um, the heroes or defeat them in turn, which would allow them to win. Now, if they defend the bomb for longer than five minutes, then they will win as well. The hero team, on the other hand, just needs to touch the bomb or they could also they could also capture both of the villains and then touch the bomb but it all ends with basically touching the bomb to quote unquote defuse it now the first team up would be Azuka Midoriya and also Ochako Uraka versus Tenya Ida and Katsuki Bakugo now this is where things kind of go off the rails because Katsuki Bakugo he's a hothead he has some temper and he decides that he doesn't want to necessarily play by the rules. He doesn't want to necessarily do the exercise. What he decides to do is he decides that he wants to fight. So when the five minutes of planning are up and Azuka Midoriya and, and Ochako Raka enter the area or enter the building, immediately, immediately, Bakugo would come spiraling down. Bakugo would come out of nowhere, blasting Azuku in the face, but Azuku is able to brush it off, grabbing Katsuki Bakugo right on the on the face and slamming him to the ground and dragging him through what the floor or the pavement. He, he immediately tells Ochako to start heading upstairs and locate where the bomb is lo uh, or located at, and he continues to fight Bakugo. Bakugo tells him that he's gonna prove why he's he should be the number one student and why he's so much better than Azuku. But Izuku reminds him that if he was better than him, then he would have scored better than him as well. So it's pretty obvious where they stand in terms of skill and who is currently and truly better than each other. Now, Bakugo is still under the um, idea that, well, Izuku doesn't even have a quirk. 
he thinks to himself, well, this kid doesn't have a quirk. I should never be losing to him. But the thing is, Nezuzuku might not have a traditional quirk and a quirk that can't be analyzed by a doctor, but he still has insane amounts of powers. And you should never count out the ability of someone like Azuku Midoriya. Not only does Bakugo not stand a chance in terms of power, Azuku has the massive martial arts gap of experience. Azuku's experience in martial arts is off the charts. I mean, when I mean off the charts, I mean off the charts. His experience with martial arts is nothing to be played with, and his experience overall just is insane. Izuku is a lethal martial artist, experienced in almost every single martial arts you can possibly think of, so there's really no chance that Bakugo stands in this regard. And he easily defeats Bakugo and makes it look very, very simple. And he makes it makes Bakugo look like a chump. And it's crazy because the bully persona of Bakugo, that's not a very good thing to have. Especially because Bakugo himself, I mean, he shows that he's like, you know, this bully or that he's this or that. And he's super strong. And don't get me wrong, he is pretty damn strong. But the level that Izuku is portraying at this moment, it's really not even close. Like, genuinely not even close. Now, with that said, Izuku, of course, um, defeats Bakugo. And this leads to him traveling up the staircase and seeing where Ochako went. Once he finds Ochako, they're basically able to... to basically seize, um, seize Tenya Ida very quickly and also seize the bomb. And this was a very simple thing for him to do, and he might have been even been able to do it quicker than he possibly could have imagined, but he didn't um, know for sure if he uh, truly had such a massive advantage on someone like Bakugo. But obviously, he did. Now, this would lead to them, well, obviously winning, and Azuku would be simple as simple enough as... Um, winning winning this event or winning this uh this training session with ochako and everybody is pretty damn impressed about what he was able to do and pretty damn impressed how he was able to do it at the end of the day and frankly is that's just the truth of it right azuku was just flat out better and was flat out just in a better position and also um, just more skilled and powerful than Bakugo ever was at this moment, and he was able to easily defeat them even if there was no other stipulation. Now, this would lead them into watching some of the other people um, fight and other people do their thing, but of course, this was kind of a filler-like thing, and Izuku would just watch it and kind of analyze what his other classmates can do and stuff like that, but for the most part, it was nothing crazy. It was pretty simple you could say and this would lead Izuku into more or less going on to the very next day and everybody is just upwardly impressed with Izuku at this point and just makes it's pretty well known that like you know Izuku is just you know at another level at this moment and everyone thinks to, to themselves that there probably is nobody that could even stand up to Izuku at this point which would include someone like Todoroki, even though Todoroki was pretty impressive in his little, um, his little thing as well. But still, it doesn't really seem like he's too, well, you know, he's too impressive in terms of a comparison with Izuku Midoriya. And this would lead them to doing their very next um, little training session, you could call it. And that would be with going to the USJ and with hero 13 now they would head over there and aizawa would tell them very very quickly that they have to be on their best behavior that they're going to get a lot from this and so on and so forth and they all believe that to be the case but what's really weird is that when it all comes to a head you could even say when they're all there when they're all waiting and they're all getting ready it seems as if this place or well you know this place in general is a little bit different than what they really expected because they thought oh he, like rescue training hero training oh yeah that sounds really fun and they never expected there to be well villains like fake villains that's 
awesome, right? That's insane. And Kirishima, who's also there, begins to even bring this up. Like, oh, yeah, this is pretty crazy. Like, what, what, what is this? Like, fake villains. Like, how much money did this cost you guys? But Aizawa would immediately jump into action saying those are not fake villains. Those villains are real. In which this would shock the students and many others, but not before they can even react. Because portals would open up and immediately, like out of what seems to be out of nowhere, well, it seems as if um, they're immediately taken away by portals into different areas. Azuku being dropped into a lake, but being able to jump out of the lake to a nearby boat pretty damn quickly. And he would soon see that there is there's two people with him, one by the name of Asui and one by the name of Mineta. In which Azuku, in all honesty, is kind of annoyed by this because... Um, not because of Asui, but more because of Mineta. Because Mineta is kind of a weird person, and Azuku doesn't really like the idea of somebody disrespecting women. And frankly, that's exactly what Mineta does. And then he even goes goes to basically disrespect Asui to a large extent, so he smacks the heck out of him and makes sure that he knows and understands to never do that again, and he's dead serious about it. In which, in which immediately Mineta is terrified of this because, I mean, Azuku's worried about something like this when there's literal villains trying to kill them. In which, I mean, Azuku is going to be worried about that no matter what, you know what I mean? Like, that, that is the type of person he is. And he doesn't care. Like, he does care that the villains are trying to kill them and all, and all that. But he also cares about, you know, keeping like a proper mentality and making sure that everyone is still upholding good morals you could even say to a large extent now this would lead them to being threatened by a bunch of villains that are within the the lake of some sort but of course this would be an easy out they would easily be able to leave because azuku's strength and also asui's strength would allow them to leap out and kind of just jump away for the most part and it wouldn't be too hard of a of of a thing to actually just leave flat out which is pretty good because now they don't have to worry about you know straight up get being stuck there or dying and stuff like that and when the other villains try to stop them azuku just knocks them out extremely extremely fast now azuku is at the point where he just wants to get asui and also Mineta out of here even though Mineta does annoy the hell out of him and he kind of wants him to you know go croak to a to a certain extent but he does want to get um, Asui out of here, so he makes sure to get them to a safe distance before he converges to actually help Aizawa with a bit of a giant problem. Because that giant problem would be the Nomu. Now, Aizawa does defeat all the other villains, and he defeats them pretty damn easily. Like, it's not really a hard task for Aizawa, right? But at the same time... He has to now deal with a Nomu, a superpowered being that is created to kill All Might. And let's just say Azuku knows that it's never that simple. Like there is just no way that, well, Aizawa is going to be able to take down a monstrous being like this. Shoot, he doesn't even know if he's going to be able and willing and also effective enough to actually take down someone like the Nomu himself. But he's going to give it his all and he's going to absolutely leave everything out there on the line to make sure that he can at least attempt to do so. Now, with this attempt, of course, there would be a mild amount of controversy just because obviously he doesn't or Aizawa doesn't want Azuku being involved or any other student involved. But luckily he did because soon Aizawa would realize very quickly that he definitely needed some help. Because the Nomu would try and fight him, or the Nomu would come charging in non-stop and would not be able to be halted, especially by Aizawa's quirk. And luckily enough, someone is able to jump in front of Azuku, or someone's ready to jump in front of Aizawa, being that of Azuku. Azuku jumps in front of the Nomu and hip tosses the basically hip tosses the Nomu to the side, slamming him on the ground, using the momentum of the Nomu against him. But he could tell that the Nomu is strong. So when he starts to throw hands with the Nomu, he needs to be very, very careful. He begins to kind of like, you know, judge his distance and try to properly fight him. But he even knows to a large extent that it's not going to be that simple. Because at the end of the day, 
The no moves a freaking issue. And he's not having the best of time, at least against the Nomu for the most part. And it's just because he's so durable. But luckily enough, Azuku seems to be able to whittle him down slowly but surely, or at least stall him out to a large extent. And eventually, eventually, the Nomu would be slowing down just a smidge. Because, well, let's just be honest, Azuku's extremely strong. Not at his peak strength, but he is extremely, extremely powerful. Now, this would lead to basically um, a large, large, large stall. And this would lead to, well, um, the, the one and only All Might eventually arriving. But as All Might arrives, it seems like Azuku is caught off guard just minorly. And when he's caught off guard, just a smidge, just a tiny, tiny little bit well the nomu gets a hold of him and let's just say the nomu does some serious serious damage to azuku the nomu would proceed to grab azuku by the arms and would pull them off yes pull them off and azuku would feel this adrenaline rushing through his body and he would scream and all might would come in as if he's like, you know, like completely angry and a blaze of glory, All Might begins to go blow for blow with the Nomu, but actually not holding back, not even one singular bit, landing punch after punch, obliterating the Nomu as fast as possible. He can't allow one of his students to be maimed like that. He was late and it was all his fault. It was because it was his fault that, that Izuku is this injured. It's his fault that this happened. And that's the way All Might feels right now, is that it was flat out his fault that all of this occurred. And to be honest, to a large extent, it kind of was. I mean, if All Might just, you know, focused more on his teaching role, this wouldn't have occurred. But here's the thing, while they're fighting, it seems as if Azuku Midoriya is standing back up. The bleeding seemingly has stopped and he is standing up and he is staring back at the Nomu. Everybody in complete and utter shock from, from crying faces to people in complete and utter just disbelief. Is Izuku okay? What's going on? What happened with him? What is, what is he going to... And as they're thinking about the idea of what is he going to do, Izuku's eyes would stare right at the ceiling. And let's just say... His hands would then reappear, growing out of his body once again as he reaches to the top of the ceiling in some sort of way. And he looks at his arms and looks at his hands and he realizes that he is so much more than just a normal person, normal guy, normal man. He has grown his limbs back and this is just another layer of powers he knew nothing about. Immediately, he would jump back into action and his durability would have spiked immensely. It's as if his body is now regenerating constantly and constantly and constantly. And he jumps into action, fighting with the Nomu once again. And it seems like he's holding an even greater advantage against the Nomu now. Like, it is really, really transparent how strong Azuku is now. And it seems as if that little bit of damage, that, that, that little occurrence... Of what just um what just happened with him getting his arms torn off just awakened an even greater power within him as he lands a blows to the nomu and gets behind the nomu grabbing both of the nomu's arms and says let's see how you like it when it happens to you pulling the nomu so far backwards that his arms begin to crack and then his arms pull off yes Azuku was able to do so as All Might would then clash with the Nomu again, landing a beautiful Detroit smash as he smashes the Nomu out of the USJ. Immediately, Shigaraki and also um, Kirogiri would try and basically just run away. I mean, they would flat out be terrified at the idea that this kid, this guy, was able to do the thing he was able to do. I mean, did they not just all see that? That was crazy. How was he able to do that? And immediately they flee. They, they just leave the scene. But they think that, frankly, what they just saw was very, very villainous. Now, it might sound weird, but they're thinking to themselves that this kid, 
he might have a little villain in him after all. And that might be beneficial to the League of Villains before you could possibly even know it. But, of course, for now, they're going to have to just run away because it's not like they have a choice in the manor. I mean, literally, if they stayed, they would have flat out just died. Now, this would lead them to, of course, um, basically, you know, taking off. And then Azuku and all, also all the other students would get a little bit of time off. And All Might would even talk to Azuku about what happened, about what occurred, and that he really should kind of be careful with how brutal he is in which Azuku responds to him saying that he had to do what he had to do, but also that thing was not a person. That was not a man. That was that was a monster. And it was something that needed to be put down. And frankly, launching him out of the USJ was probably the nice way to go about things. Because honestly, that thing should have died. That thing should have been put in the ground. And that's what Azuku truly believes. And All Might, even to an extent, kind of thinks to himself that maybe the kid is right. Like, that thing wasn't a human being anymore. If, if, if it ever was a human being in the first place. But that thing was far from a human being. And he's kind of right. The, kid, the thing needed to be put down for good. But at the end of the day, I mean, heroes don't necessarily make that choice um, in this regard or shouldn't have to make that choice. But sometimes beings aren't worth saving. And even Azuku and maybe even to an extent All Might understands that to an extent. Now, this would lead Azuku into actually going off and doing the the next kind of event, quote unquote, which would be the UA Sports Festival. But here's the thing. And quickly after this, they would actually realize that there was another drawback to Azuku gaining this massive regeneration. It's that he can't be out in the sun. The guy walks out into the sun and starts burning up and his skin starts burning to a crisp and melting, hurting him extremely bad. Now, of course, Azuku can kind of get around this and there is some training to be had so that he could get around this. But for now, I mean, he flat out cannot go out in the sun. So unfortunately, the number one student of UA is going to have to take a bit of a sideline until he can he can uptune his tolerance to the sun. And that's exactly what he's going to do over the course of all of this time leading up until their internships. Azuku, instead of being part of the UA Sports Festival and all of those things, he has to try and tune back the 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 kind of like horrible feeling that he gets when he gets scorched by the sun so they do kind of like you know minor exposure and then also kind of testing with his body what they need to do and so on and so forth and um eventually they find out exactly what needs to happen and the support class is able to more or less help him with that as well and they give him some sort of like a sun cream kind of or sunscreen or a cream that allows him to kind of be okay in the sun but it more more specifically helps with his tolerance so over time while this time is happening over a couple weeks he is able to build up this tolerance to where it's not that bad but to be honest he still has massive restrictions and throughout his time at ua in general like his literal time throughout ua in general he's gonna have to build this tolerance more and more but for now he can kind of be out in the sun for a couple hours maybe three four hours but like he literally can't be out in the sun for a long long period of time or serious damage is going to be made but luckily enough there's a lot of people that heard about azuku before all of this occurred and there is somebody in the internships actually quite a few people that are very interested in working with someone like azuka midoriya and maybe there's somebody that wants to work with him for her own selfish reasons because well there is a hero the rabbit hero miriko who is looking for a challenge and a fight and a sparring partner and frankly azuka midoriya the prodigy martial artist kind of fits the mold perfectly so how could he turn down an offer from someone and one of the top heroes in the in the entirety of japan and arguably one of the strongest heroes in the entirety of japan well you can't 
you can't turn it down and you can't deny it so he doesn't deny it so he accepts a internship with Mirako and this would lead them or lead him on another journey with learning more about martial arts learning more about fighting styles and also gaining in strength himself but for now that is where we're going to end part two of what if Deku was like Akaza and if you enjoyed show some love leave a like leave a sub leave a comment down below and I just want to hear what you guys have to say um, about the story also about what you would like to see next um, I have gotten a couple people asking if I would do blue lock again maybe I will asking about shield hero maybe I will um, the thing about blue lock is I don't want to go past where the anime is I know some of you are like oh well I want to see the manga stuff like that I get it but I know there are, are a lot of people that watch my stuff that are anime only so I kind of like doing that it also gives me a little bit less work to do but when there's anime when the anime comes out I will 1000% go into that as well I've also been watching a little bit of Dr. Stone so maybe that's something you guys want to see as well please let me know in the comment section below um, if you want to see something to do with Dr. Stone and uh, yeah that's all I really got to say I hope y'all enjoyed the video and I hope all y'all have an amazing day later